Hey, what's up, everybody? How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are excited. Today, we're going to learn some stuff about Google Classroom, Google Sheets, Slides, kind of whatever, whatever we can to help you build your uh, repertoire of things you're doing in your class. And I want to answer any questions you have along the way. So if you think of anything, if there's anything I can adapt or adjust or you have questions, ask them at any time because I want to do stuff that helps you. Before we get started, if you could, that way you can find this later is share with other teachers, friends, whoever might be able to learn from it. If you could hit that red subscribe button underneath the video, I'd really appreciate it, but no pressure, although it is free, doesn't cost you anything. So I dropped the link to the presentation in the comments if you want it. It's short link is bit.ly slash Google number two, the max. Okay, and so I tossed that link in there if you need it. Um, that way you can have all these resources because there's a ton of links in here that hopefully will be able to help you out. So that is the idea. All right, so um, first off, let's talk about a couple things you can do if you would like um, to find this. I'm giving a little bit of time for people to jump in. So if you're watching this later, you're more than welcome to scrub ahead in the video. Sorry for singing. Not a very good singer, but I will give it my best. What do they say in Hamilton? You know, uh, not going to waste my shot. So if you want, I'm Tyler Tarver on, you know, Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff. So if you want to check it out, check it out. And then we are also, um, if you want, I text out resources. If you want to text the word teacher to 501-214-4071, I'll text out free resources every chance I get. Um, anytime I make a new resource, which is at least once or twice a week, I'll try to send those out to all those people. Um, usually around once a week. I don't over text, but it's free. If you want, just text that and uh, and I'll send it to you whenever I get it. Um, so what up, Scott? How's it going? Bitten Junior High in the house. What's up? Okay, so if you're just joining us, click the link in the chat or go to the link in the bottom left-hand corner. Oh, you can't see that very well. Time to shrink my face and make the slide a little bigger. So uh, the link in the bottom left, if you want to click on that, well, you can't click on that because it's in a video, but if you want to click on the link in the chat or go to the link on the screen, I would love to help you out as we learn more about Google. We're going to talk about Google Classroom, but I want to talk about all the things you can do with Google Classroom and just kind of even talk about some thought processes. So if you have any questions, thoughts, things you want to cover, throw it in the chat. I'm looking at it. I'm checking the chat and I want to answer anything you guys want at any point. What's up, Leslie? How are you doing? You good? How's school been going? Everything going okay? Man, oh my goodness, Melody's here. Oh my goodness, the whole the whole squad. Okay, so Tammy's probably here. I wanna give a big shout out to Tammy Gilmore. She has been incredible. And she is actually the one that invited me to be a part of this. And that's with the ALA, Arkansas Literacy Association. Thank them so much for being a part of this. And if you, um, if you want, at the end of this, uh, Tammy is gonna toss a link in the chat so you can get PD hours for this. That's what's up. I don't know why I did this. That's what's up. So if you want to get PD hours, go ahead and uh, there's Tammy. What's up, Tammy? Robin, hey, how's it going? Tammy, you're going to toss that link in here in a little bit. And also she's going to toss a link in the chat real quick to check out upcoming Tech Tuesday webinars they have with ALE. So check in there. Um, Rochelle, thank you so much for sharing your, my stuff. I appreciate that. I legitimately appreciate it. That's one of the things. Like you can make all these resources, but if nobody sees them, it's like there's a tree fall in the woods. So Tammy's going to toss that link so you guys can check out more of their Tech Tuesday webinars they're doing. And we're going to keep rolling. If you've never heard of me, um, just to give you the brief on this, my name's Tyler. I've been a high school math teacher. I've been a principal. I've been a central office administrator. And I have a website called tarveracademy.com where I make a bunch of free resources for teachers and students to help them learn and have fun. That's my goal is to help teachers learn and get better every day. And so there you go. That's it. What's up, Kentucky? Beth, I see you, Beth. Thank you. Yeah, I'm pretty hyped. I'm not going to lie, guys. If I yell, I know I'm a little bit yelling right now, but you can always turn your volume down because I'm not going to get non-hype for Google products because I love Google. So if you have any questions, let me know. I want to kick it off. Um, this is actually the second part in a series. What's up in California, Arkansas? Say what's up, y'all. Christine. So um, 
This is actually the second part in a Google Classroom series. The last one, we talked about kind of some of the basics of Google Classroom. We even talked about virtual bell ringers that can not only get the discussion started in your class, not only um, give your students a chance to think and grow, but it also can help you take attendance if you schedule it correctly. Johnny, I didn't see your question. It says, how do you log into Google Classroom? You're Jerry's dad. All right, I don't know who Jerry is, but he sounds great. So what you're gonna do is you need to go to classroom.google.com and you need to sign in with his email account. That's how he's gonna get in, okay? So classroom.google.com, great question. What up, Ohio? I got a friend who lives in Ohio, launching a church, trademark church. Okay, so let's talk, um, before we get started, I can't remember if I had these resources last time I talked to you guys. If not, um, okay, you, uh, I don't know who that is, Johnny, but I don't think I'm that person. So here we go. Um, here we go, resource of the day. So I've got a couple resources for you guys. If you go to tarveracademy.com, that's where I house a ton of those resources if you wanna get those. And uh, other than that, here is one that I made recently. If you are a teacher, I made something called a Google Teacher Cheat Sheet. And, uh, and if you click on that, look at this, check this out. So I actually had it linked to a Google Doc at first, but too, so many people were jumping in that thing. I had to like, change it out and make it redirect to my website. I don't usually like to be like, hey, go to my website. But honestly, it's uh, it's been the best because it hasn't overloaded. As you guys may or may not know, Google Docs can have 100 people in there at one time editing and they can have 250 that are um, in there and they are, um, they can have 250 that are viewing at one time. And I had a bunch of people jump in it when I first made it, so I had to switch it to my website, but you can still get the doc from my website. So if you go to tarveracademy.com slash Google teacher, I've moved, here's a couple videos, classroom etiquette video, how to film on an iPhone. And then I've got tutorials and these are the ones, I've got way more tutorials than this. I've got like 300 plus tutorials, but these are the ones that are, these are the ones that are directly related to teachers and how they're going to handle their, uh, their specific duties they have. So I like, I kind of cut out the mess and just put the stuff you're probably going to need. So we've got Google Classroom stuff. We've got Sheets, Forms, Docs, Slides, and Google Meet. So these are some tutorials. It's a quick reference guide for you guys. Um, Here's some resources. I've actually got, made a few more resources. I need to put those on there. I made some templates, but I'm going to give you guys those templates today. Lesson plan templates and digital notebook templates. So I'm going to throw those guys to you. Uh, we got full trainings. These are like 30 minute to one and a half hour trainings for you guys if you want them. And so if you want them, go for them. Uh, you can check those out. We also have resources for students. And so if you need that for your students, there you go. Important links, YouTube resources, channel recommendations. I've got a ton of stuff for you. It's a Google cheat sheet for teachers. You can click here to get the doc or you can click here, make a copy of the doc and delete stuff that you want, okay? Ooh, Robin, good, I'm excited, I'm not gonna lie. I actually start with Google Digital, or I'm sorry, Google Digital, Digital Notebooks, I'm pretty hype about them. So I'm excited that you're excited, Robin, I'm excited. Okay, so um, if you want that, there it is. And also I have a resource for Tarver Academy, not for Tarver Academy, that's where I put it, but I've got a resource for students. And this is a Google cheat sheet for students. So I did the same thing I did for teachers, but I put the stuff that students need to know about classroom, Sheets, slides, docs, uh, Google Meet, stuff like that. So I've got all of those resources linked under here. So honestly, guys, because I've done, I mean, I was a teacher of a, a principal and lead teacher of a school that had online, in person, blended learning. And one of the things that you're going to do is you're going to get students asking you, you're essentially turning into their Google trainer. How do I do this? How do I submit this? How do I do this? And you're going to use up so much of your valuable time just telling them the same instructions over and over. What I recommend is it won't let Stacy, it won't let you access the video. Like, oh, you might have to hit refresh. If you can't access the video, hit refresh on the page and it'll kick on. Okay. And if it says restricted, that means you've got restricted mode turned on. You might be on like a school Wi Fi. You can click that at the bottom. So just hit refresh and you should be able to see the video. Um, okay. I'm going to tell them in the chat hit refresh, hit refresh. Boom. Okay. So um, in here, this is a reference. You need to send students to go through the tutorials. They're not going to learn if you just keep handing it to them. Okay. So, um, I didn't get that. Could you boom. So there you go. Um, you click refresh. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. 
Okay, so this is a bunch of stuff that students are going to need to know. These are resources for them, and it can help you out. That's tarveracademy.com slash Google student. Now, I want to show you something on the next slide. Check this out. So we're going to roll straight into our Google Classroom stuff. So let's say you're like, oh, I, how do I need to send uh, my students to a place where they can get those resources, where they can get Google help? So I'm going to show you some stuff um, that you can do as like a way to make this resource available to them and easy to find. Because here's the thing, guys. The less clear you are or the more complicated you make things and how you assign it, not because you mean to, just because they have this barrier, this gap away from you and using this curriculum, this content, you're going to need to find the easiest way possible for them to find this. So Google tutorials, that is like a semester or year long resource. The syllabus, that's a semester or year long resource. Um, if you're using an, uh, like a different LMS, like Lincoln Learning or Buzz or anything like eDynamic Learning, if you're using any of these, you know, third party curriculums, then that's going to be a link that they need to access a lot. So I'm going to show you what I would do in my Google Classroom if I was doing this. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to copy the link to these Google tutorials for students. So I'm going to copy that link. Then I'm going to go into my Google Classroom. OK, so let's start back at the beginning of Classroom. I'm going to roll in to, let's say we're in History Magic. Boom. OK, now I want to go into Classwork. And I want to create a class resource section. OK, so I want this section to be at the top. So what I want to do is I want to go to Create. And I don't want to make an assignment because you don't want Google tutorials as Google help videos. And then you don't want to um, make that into something that they get an assignment for, unless you want them to like go through and watch them all, then you could make an assignment. I want to post it as a material. So I'm going to click as a material and I'm going to title this um, Google student tutorials. Refer to this for e Google questions. Don't hit me up until you watch it here. OK, the topic we want to attach the topic is class resources. Now, if you don't have it, you need to go to create topic. Um, so you go to create topic. If you don't have it. I've got one called class resources. Now I want to click add and I want to toss in this link. OK, if it's a Google Doc, you would do Google Doc, but I'm just going to paste the link, hit add link. Now they have this Google tutorial resource or any resource, your syllabus. It can be anything that you have. You can toss that in there. OK, so we're going to go over here. And we're going to go to post. OK, I'm posting that for all students. All right. Oh, my goodness. OK. <laughs> so we're going to go over here and we're going to toss in. Uh, we're looking over here at our class resources and Look, there it is. Now students can refer to this at any time throughout the year. Your syllabus, Google to help tutorials, anything that they're going to, any links that they need needs to be separated because here's the deal. This is like, think of semester long links and resources that you're going to be referring to all semester and all year. If you just toss it in the stream or sort it into a unit or a category or a week, then they have to think, okay, wait, where was the link for this? And then they have to go back to like week three, day two to find that resource. Okay. So, uh, yes, Robin asked a great question. Thank you so much, Robin. Can you pin it to the top? Yes, you can. Check this out. OK, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so you can see it. Do you see those three dots right here up in the upper right hand corner? You can click on those and you can drag it to wherever you want in the list. Click and drag. So I can drag my resources to the top. I could change week one, put that up here at the top. I could put week two at the top. Boom. Or you can go click on those three dots. Let me zoom in a little bit. You can drag it to the top. You click this. Scott's already got me. I see you, Scott. Click these three dots. You can move it up or down from there as well. Look at that. Brr, brr, brr. See that? Okay. So that allows you to move it up or down or you can pin it. Okay. Now, those are great reps. So like if you have like a Google Meet link you like, that's not like built in. Anything that you think is a semester, like a long term reference. I used to teach high school math. I'll tell you this my formulas page, that would have been linked under class resources because that's something they stay there. Um, Robin, I'm not sure if it stays there. 
whenever a new assignment or a new like topics created, I think it goes, to, let's find out, let's do this. Let's create a topic. We'll make another material. I'm going to put it under, um, uh, let me see if you can pin it guys. That's a good question. So let's say, I don't think you can pin it, but let's see if this falls in the top or the bottom. This title is Google tips two. Okay. Uh, more Google stuff. Okay. So I'm going to add, and I could add my, um, I could add my YouTube channel. So youtube.com slash Sir Tyler Tarver. Add link. Boom. Uh, okay. So let's add a new topic. So I'm going to hit create topic. Let's see. I'm going to say um, Google tutorials. And I'm going to hit post. So I've created a new topic. And it sticks it to the top. So all you're going to have to do is anytime you create a new topic, which won't be very often, even if you're doing it week to week, um, then it's going to have to go in there. So you can click, drag it up to the top. Boom. It's back up there. So it's going to have to go in a little bit. This is fun. Uh, boom. Okay. So here we go. So we're all in here. We're going to keep going through this. So that's how you need to do that. You need to pin a class resources section to the top. Okay, I just, I say pin it to the top. You need to keep moving it to the top. And every time you create a new category, it's going to go to the top. And you just drag the new one above it. So that's something to think about. And I think everybody should have that in their class. Okay, so let's talk about digital interactive notebooks. So if you're in the presentation, which I'll toss the link in again of what the presentation is. So it's http slash bit.ly slash Google to the max. Okay, so I tossed the link into the presentation if you don't have it. This is slide six, and there's a bunch of digital interactive notebooks out there. I've got some that I made, and um, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna kind of show you what I would do with mine. This will apply to any digital interactive notebooks you have, and they're all a little bit different, but I'm gonna kind of show you the one that I've got and how I would use it. So I've got a full semester one right here, and then I've got a weekly one. I would probably use the weekly one at this point because most of you guys have started school. Now, you could do a full semester one and just allow students to look at it instead of like making a copy for them because you're not going to want to make a bunch of copies and you might not have your whole semester built out. Okay, so what you can do, and this is how I would set mine up. I would, that's a good, uh, I don't know if I say your wrong name correct. Dina, is that how you say it? Dina? Um, this is what I would do and how I would set it up in classroom because you had them share it with you. What I would do is I would actually create it as an assignment and that way it'll automatically create the copies for them and you'll already have access to it, which I'm going to show you. So we're going to click on this and I'm going to click on a weekly template. So I'm going to click on this. It's going to ask me to make a copy. If you click on those links, you can have the, these are free templates that I made for everybody and anybody that wants it. So if you click on that, it'll make a new copy and you can, uh, you can check it out. So, and it, you can have it. It's yours. I don't have access to it. It's yours. Okay. So there's like a little welcome page form from me and I've actually got a YouTube video walking through how to use a digital notebook on there, but I'm showing you how I would use it as a teacher of the class. So I could take that first page, click off of it. Okay. So what you would do is you would make a template that you're going to share with your students. So I'm making a digital notebook that has kind of like the baseline of what I want students to have. And then I'm going to share it with them and then make a copy for each student so they can fill out the notebook themselves. Okay. So they would put their name here. You could put the subject because you know what their subject is that they teach or that you teach or with the class that you're in. And so you could put that subject there. You could toss in, this is, you know, what do we say? Geometry. Okay. And then you put your favorite quote here. I'm not going to do that, but you could put a quote in for it. Um, Here's some important links. Now <clears throat> I tossed this slide in. Um, because just like we talked about in class resources, there are certain links that students are using all the time that, um, it's helpful to make as easy as possible for them to find them. Okay. So you would go in and you could put like a link. So say you use, you know, uh, you could use Google classroom, Google classroom. And so I could link that hit Google classroom. So classroom.google.com. Boom. Did you guys know this? You can search for websites. So like Tar if I wanted Tarver Academy for more resources for students, I can click on that, hit K, and then I can just search Tarver Academy. It searches Google in the hyperlink so that you could just click on it and attach it. Isn't that really, that's just, that's incredible. I love Google integrating. So you toss your links in there. 
You can delete mine. You can leave them. You can do whatever you want with them. There they are. Then I even tossed in some Google help tutorials because it doesn't hurt to have help videos everywhere that a student might go. So here's some helpful tutorials for students that they might need that they can refer to as they're using this essentially as their online binder for the year. And so you can go through there. This, if this is weekly, I set up attendance. You could delete this page if you wanted, or it could be a clock in, clock out resource for students. So they could go in and say, oh, I'm going to sign in at, you know, eight o'clock. And they could write, I was in at eight o'clock and I signed out at 11 o'clock and they could sign in and sign out for the day if you want. Um, so uh, there you go. You can do that. And then I've got a spot for students down here. What worked with your schedule? Um, you know, I did well in the mornings. And then also over here, it says what you don't like. And this is a way for you to go in and check at any time and get updates from students on what they're doing. You wouldn't put that in there because you're making the template for all students and you don't wanna give the advice. I'm just saying the students can do that whenever they want, okay? Then you roll into your week. Um, you would just toss the link on it and say, oh, this is week three. And then you could put something here. Um, you guys are doing great, keep rocking, okay? You can put in stuff you want students to see in there. Now, we roll over here to week at a glance. This allows you to go in and say the things that you want students to know uh, about the week. So Monday, you could just say, you know, it's a half day of learning or, you know, change of times. You know, we start at nine. You can just put reminders in there. The more places you remind students or put links or short links or anything like that, the better it's going to be for them. It is okay to put it in a lot of places. It's just like with Google. Whenever you use a Google product, they make like four different ways to do anything. And so what you can do is you can make four to 10 different ways for students to get to something. So, all right, cool. All right, so, um, oh shoot, I just did the wrong thing. I actually put, Chris, I didn't mean to put you in timeout, my bad. Oh my goodness, y'all crazy. People in the chat crazy. Uh, all right. So my bad, Carissa. Okay. So then what we did is I kind of made it like a to-do list for the week for the students so they can go in and do what I call big three. Um, yes. Um, Dina, that's a great question. Dina asked, I'm going to toss this on here. Dina asked, would you need to add that info before sharing it with the students or would it automatically add? You would need to add it before you share this with the students in Google Classroom. Okay. So here, there's two ways to do this. If you're making it to where like you're going to build out the lesson plan or like the digital notebook for them, and then you're just going to share it so they can all look at it, then you can update it as you go. But if you're going to put all the resources and the to do stuff and like plan out the week for your students, and then you're going to send it to them and make a copy, then you can't go backfield. OK, and that's why I said earlier, like I have a full semester template. You might do that for second semester when you can plan the whole semester ahead. But right now I would do week to week, take a template, build out your links, your title and all that stuff. And then you can just put in separate assignments or things that you want students to do each day. Okay. So you can go in and do that. Cool. So there you go. That's not a bad resource. I put what I call big three on here. So like on Monday, let's say you want the students to work on um, their most important thing that day is, you know, talk to your group about the project so you could put that in on your big three and then students would know that they need to do it and i also set it up to where they can fill in the boxes so like those, over to the left i have instructions um you click on that and then you could just go to this little paint fill and then whenever a student gets something done they can just click that and then just paint fill it and say that they did it see that's like a checklist for them and they're just filling it in based on that and they can fill this out you can fill it out however you want to do it so that's another way to do it. And I've got instructions and an instructional video on how to do that off to the left. So if you see that you can, they can watch that. I try to put the instructions in there for stuff um, so that they can see it, you know, as they do it. Oh my goodness. Uh, all right, so cool, 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 cool. So that's what you can do. So think of some resources or some ways that you could utilize this um, in the future. Okay. Hold on one second.
and awesome. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're rolling. I've got that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Any, almost any digital notebook's gonna have it. I've also got a notes section, so if they wanna build in a notes page, you can add that. I've got a Cornell notes page if you want it. And then this one's good because it allows the students to reflect its big wins from the week. What went well, how could it be better? You want the students to fill this out. You can even have them screenshot it, um, send it back to you, or you could go in and look at it, okay? So now you've set up your digital notebook, either mine or the one that I have or any other one that you have, and now you wanna share that in classroom. So what you wanna do is you want to go, I'm gonna change the title, we'll call this like a week three digital notebook, okay? So I'm gonna know to go find that. So, yes, I am trying to model, Tammy, how to handle chats, but also teach while you're doing it. Um, what I would do, actually, I'm going to show you what I'll do right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign on over to YouTube. I'm using StreamYard, which allows me to video, but also show my screen. And I'm going to go over to YouTube because in YouTube, you can add moderators. And so I'm public right now on YouTube. So anybody can comment get in the chat, say whatever they want to say. And so you want some students to be moderated. It's almost like they become like hall monitors for the chat. And so I'm going to sign in. It's logging in right now to that. And what you're going to do is you can actually go in and I can make a couple of you guys moderators. So you can block, put people in timeout. You can adjust anything in the chat that you want. So let me see. Ooh, okay. So right now I'm going to go in and I'm going to make Tammy a moderator. So let me see, if I scroll down, I added Tammy now as the moderator. So now Tammy can go into the chat and she can block people. She can adjust it. She can do whatever she needs to do. And she has the power of the chat. Okay. So I'm back over here. We've just created a digital notebook. We did a weekly one. It's for students to fill in their to-do list. You can put stuff in, they can add notes. They have options but you filled in the important stuff that you need to do or that they need to do for the week. Now, the reason I recommend the weekly digital notebook for right now is because you've already started. You don't want to hand them a full semester because you're going to be adapting and adjusting as you go. Week to week gives you more, <clears throat> you have more intervals where you can go in and adjust stuff. So whenever, whenever you go in here, you can go to create and um, you can go into, let's see, we can do, I'm trying to think we should do an assignment. If, I mean, if you're doing notebook checks, honestly, I would do digital. If, if you want them to take it seriously, you should do a digital uh, interactive notebook assignment. So you want to go to like, I would make it worth points because if not, they're not going to take it serious. So you would call this, you know, week three digital notebook. Okay. And then you could, this is what I do. Also, this is a fun fact in classroom. The more basic or simplified you can be, the better it's going to be for the, um, the students to be able to go in and see what they need to do next. You now have a bear between you and your students. It's not you standing in front of the class talking, it's distance. It is, they're at their home, they're at different facilities, 30 to 150 different facilities, you know, their homes all across the place. So what you gotta do is you gotta bridge that communication gap that happens whenever you're at different locations. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna say number one, you need to say, you know, review what you need to do for the week. Two, you want to go in and say, you know, fill in your to-do list of what you're doing. Make sure you, I spelled it wrong, make sure you submit at the end of the week. Okay, so now I need to add the resource. So I'm going to go add. I'm gonna go to Google Drive because I wanna pull this from where I just worked on it. Now, it goes to recent, that's like your default. So I'm gonna go over to recent. And I'm going to, oh, let me see if it did it. It does this sometimes, it creates it in the wrong account. So I'm gonna hit share with my account. Oh, sorry, one second. So this is what happens sometimes when you're planning. You gotta hit share. And I got to make sure that the other account that I was signed into has access because that's why it's not showing up in the drive. Tyler app. Okay. Boom. There we go. Hit send. Hit send. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Now I'm going to roll in 
to my classroom again. I'm going to check this out. Let's see. Here we go. Here we go. So I'm going to search and drive for week three. Oh, there we go. So I'm going to find that assignment and I need to attach that assignment. Now, remember, only attach these assignments when you're ready for it to go out to all your students. So I'm going to hit insert. Okay, this is where it's key. This is the big deal. Okay, so somebody, I think it was Robin, asked earlier, can you change it later? If I select students can view file, then I can change it as we go and they can look at it. However, they're not going to be able to go in and edit it because you've only given them view access. You can click on this. You can go to make a copy for each student. We talked about this last session that we did. Make a copy for each student is going to take your original copy, whatever it is, whenever I hit post, and it's going to go and it's going to make a copy for every single student that they can fill out individually or as a group, however you want to do it. I'm going to make a topic called, I would definitely go uh, digital weekly notebooks. That way I can organize those. It's worth 100 points because it's important. I can make it due at the end of the week and then I can assign it. It is now going to create a copy for every single student in my class. So, Chad, that's how you make a copy. When you do that, it will. Um, okay. If you make a copy of the digital notebook and link the copies, it will update the changes as you add and change things. I don't think it will, Chris. I may be wrong, but I don't think it will. Um, so, Christine said, can you make a file view only if it is not an assignment? Can you make a file view only if it is not an assignment? Yes, you can. That would just be a sharing permission. You would go up to share and you could just make it a link. So right now, my, you guys can be in my presentations because I made it visible to you guys. You'll share it and make it visible to anybody with the link and then you'll just make it visible to your, um, it will just make it visible to the people that have the link and you can even restrict it within your organization. So no random people across the internet can jump in and start talking on it. So there you go. Um, here we go. Okay. All right. So uh, it will not update. Once you send it out, it's almost like it takes a picture of it and it sends it out when it looks like that, um, unless they've changed something. Now, here's what the cool thing is. If you do that, you can now access that in your Google Drive. So I'm going to go to my Google Drive. I'm going to go to my folder that Google created for me called Classroom. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go to, let's see, uh, this is, I can't, let me find it. Um, it was history of magic. Magic class. Okay. So we're going to find that class. We're going to find that assignment. Let's see, week three. Make sure I'm signing in the right one. Okay. And what it would be is, there it is, three digital notebook. It's usually under classroom. I pulled it out for another tutorial and see what it did. It took and made a copy of that for each person individually. So Draco, Harry, Hermione, and Ron all have their own copy and you have access to it. So if you just shared it with them, then they can't see it, but they can jump in. Um, let's see. They can't, you can't see it unless they share it with you. With this, you automatically have access to where you can go in and see it at any time. So you could go in at any point, check a certain students and look at what they have going in there. Um, in their digital notebook. You could go in and you could put comments. I could go into Harry's, I could click on it and I could go to his individual one and make a change if I need to. Add stuff in it, um, boom, there you go. So that's what you can do for digital notebooks, okay? Cool, let's keep moving. Let's keep rolling. All right, so that's digital interactive notebooks. Now, digital lesson plans, similar. And I wanted to toss this in here. <clears throat> With these lesson plans, most of the time we make lesson plans and we just like share them with our principal or we never look at them or whatever it is. With these, you can take this lesson plan. You could take a full semester lesson plan. You click this. Here's a template if you want it. I've got these linked in here. I actually released these early to my Patreon people, but um, I'm going to release them to everybody um, tomorrow. So if you check, if you sign, if you text teacher to that number, I'm going to text out these lesson plans tomorrow if you want them. So. You can click on that, you can create your own lesson plan, or if you have your own, um, I'm making through the week. So Tammy's doing exactly what 
um, I was going to recommend to you guys. That's excellent point, Tammy. I would take these lesson plans. This is, I just got a full semester one. Okay. <laughs> so I've got these full lesson plans and you could go in and you could take this link and you could share it to where they can view it. So I can go in, hold on a sec. All right. So I would go in here, you could fill it out. I made some lesson plans. It's got navigation to different links or to different weeks in the semester. You can fill it out, whatever. But you could take this. If you're okay with students and parents seeing it, it's a great way for them to plan and see what their kids need to do for the week. So you could go in. I could go to my, let's see, I'm going to title this, um, you know, I could title it Geometry Lesson Plans Semester One. Okay. So I'm going to title it. And then I want to share this with all of my students so that they can see it. I'm going to make sure I share that with the account that I'm about to log into. All right. We're loading up. How y'all guys doing? Is everybody good today? Are y'all okay? Y'all okay? All the teachers, uh, raise your, uh, let me know in the chat, what do you teach? I'd love to know what you teach and what city you're in. How's that? Throw that in there. What you teach and what city you're in. Throw that in the chat while I'm sharing this with the account. Awesome. Okay. So you won't have to do that. You'll be in your account. I just, I'm in different accounts because I have multiple Google accounts. So we're in here. Um, Christine, let's see. Awesome. Oh my goodness. Look at these people. Okay. So what I would do, Tammy, this is what Tammy does. And I think it's a great idea. So you go into classroom. I'm going to move my digital class resources up to the top because it's important. I'm going to go create. I'm going to go to material and I'm going to title it, you know, semester one lesson plans. And you can make it visible to all the students and all the moms. Um, and uh, okay. All right. So you can go in here. I can say, um, please uh, refer to this to see what we are doing each day. And then I can add that, go to my Google Drive, and I'm going to grab that link. Okay. And this is, I'm, I'm, Tammy, I'm assuming this is what you did. Okay. So I'm going to take, let's see, lesson plan semester. Search that. Okay. If you make, if you edit yourself, it should pop up. Okay. So we're rolling in here. I'm going to click on geometry. I'm going to go to insert. Awesome. I'm going to insert that in there. I'm going to put the topic. It's a class resource because this is something they can refer to all year. And now I've already got it on, like it's, you can't make a copy for your student because when you make a material, your only option is to let them view it. Okay. I could change the settings if I wanted to, but I don't, I just want them to be able to view it. And I hit post. It is now a resource that they can reference at any time. Students, parents, whoever can click on this and reference this lesson plan and they can see where we are in the year. Okay. Here's the cool thing. If you're really diligent about putting stuff in there after you do it or during the week you're doing it next year, you can use this as like a map or a guide to guide you for the whole year. Okay. Tammy, it looks like this is what Tammy does. She goes in, she went to geometry, she went to share and then she changed it to right here, changed to anyone with the link. And then she's copying the link. And I'm Tammy, I'm assuming that's what you did. You toss that link in there and you should attach that as a link, which is totally okay as well. You don't have to pull it from there. You can also toss the link in it. Okay, cool. Start thinking of your questions. Um, if you want, I'm gonna, we're gonna have a little bit of time to answer questions this time because last time I talked the whole time and I didn't get a chance to answer her questions and I want to answer questions, throw out ideas, walk through stuff that you guys want. So start thinking of your questions and we're gonna start going through that, okay? This one, I'm not gonna talk about again because we talked about it last time, but we were talking about lesson plans. So I did wanna put this slide in here in case you wanted this resource. This is a curriculum map for you to be able to go in and toss links to things. This can become your hub for anything you are doing. Now, next thing I wanna show you, has anybody out there, let me know in the chat, have you used Screencastify? That's a phenomenal app. Um, it is where you can record your screen. You can also record your own face at the same time if you want and make short videos. Now, I think you're limited to five minute videos or less unless you are, um, 
unless you unless you buy the subscription, I think the yearly subscription is like 30 or 40 bucks for a full year or if your school subscribed to it. Okay, so we're gonna roll into Screencastify. If you have it, you just search it. It's a Google add-on, so you can just search, you know, Screencastify add-on. So Screencastify add-on, okay? And so I'm gonna add this. I'm gonna click Screencastify. <laughs> Dina, I have a Southern accent too, so don't feel bad. I get it all the time. So I want to go to, Carissa, do you know how much the premium version is for Screencastify? Do you remember? Loom, I've heard good things about Loom, Scott. I need to try it. I have heard about it. I heard it's great. Um, so I've already got Screencastify added. If not, you would add it right there. It would be up there in that corner. So now what I can do is I can go up here to the upper right. Do you guys see that little, it looks like an arrowhead. I can click on that. That is the Screencastify icon and I've got it, a picture of it in there. Tammy, so the, those of you that have used Screencastify and Loom, which one do you prefer? I'd love to see which one's better because if I need to get in there and try to uh, try out Loom, I need to try it out. So here's my minute warning. You can choose to do desktop, webcam, or both. Let's say I want to do both. I'm going to select this and I'm going to hit record. What it's going to do is it's going to record my screen for me. See, it's counting down. Boom. Do you see how I've got a screen on there? That's kind of trippy to have two screens. There you go. Um, yes. Wendy asked if there's a way to record your screen without the students. Yes, you can. You can record through Screencastify or you can run StreamYard, which is what I'm using. Okay, StreamYard. And it's got a free version that allows you to record and the students are in the chat. So it's recording. I can go up here and I can stop the recording. No, nope, that's the webcam. Sorry. Hit the X. Nope, that's my tools. Stop it. Oh, I'm sorry. Hit the arrowhead. Hit the arrowhead. That's going to allow you to stop the recording. I'm going to say stop. Then it's going to pop up a screen and you have the option of what to do with that recording. Now, here's the cool thing. You can publish it to YouTube if you want and then toss the link in. It has an option to share it directly to Google Classroom. Okay. Okay. I'm going to use Loom. Sorry for recommending Screencastify. Check out Loom. If that's what Tammy and Scott recommend, there you go. It, it's probably better. So I'm going to pick which class I want to attach it to. Let's go to history of magic, choose action. What I want to do, create an assignment, ask a question, make an announcement, create a material. Let's say I want to make an announcement, hit go. Now I can fill it in. Hey, watch this. And then I can hit post. It's going to upload it directly into Google Classroom. How cool is that? I love it whenever these things integrate within Classroom. Super easy, super, and it's not on the internet. It, I mean, it's on the internet, but it's not public on the internet. It's just to your class, okay? So I can view it if I want to. I can view it if I want to. That's whatever. Okay, so there you go. It became his announcement because that's what I chose. It goes in. What it does is it doesn't stick it on YouTube. It uploads it into Google Drive, and it makes it a video that you can watch directly from Google Drive. There you go. That's awesome. I, I just I think that's a really cool thing. Here's the cool thing too. You could have students make screen records where they're explaining stuff. So I'm gonna check out Loom and then I'll let you guys know which one I think is better. Now we've already talked about organization a little bit, but organization is gonna be key. Not only for your students as they're trying to work these assignments, they're trying to stay on it. Think of this. This is the mindset you need to have whenever you're organizing stuff or putting in instructions. You have to think: Would a parent who has never been in my class, be able to walk up, read this, and know what they're supposed to do. Because if the students, especially if they're working virtually, you know, the whole time, they're gonna need, they're gonna need you to go in and they're gonna need you to um, they're gonna need you to edit, they're gonna need you to not edit, but they're gonna need you to check and uh, I'm sorry, let me restart. The parent needs to be able to walk in at any point in time and they need to be able to understand what's expected of their child so that they can help get the student through the assignment, all right? When you don't have the chance for you to talk in the class, you need to be able to explain it well to where those parents can do it. So anytime you're organizing it, do lists one through five. You're not oversimplifying it. You're making it easy enough for the students to understand and the parents to understand. Another reason you should organize your stuff right now is because as you are doing your class, as you're going through it this year, next year, you'll be able to find all this stuff. So future you would really appreciate it if you organize everything you're doing, okay? Couple other tips that I wanna throw out before we do the Q&A part. 
you need to do, you need to build community. That means I recommend a minimum of a video a week, preferably a video every day. You could do Screencastify, walk them through what's expected of them for the day. You can use your phone. Your phone actually has a, uh, you can go directly in the Google Classroom app. You can click on it and you can um, record the video directly into Classroom and it'll upload into Classroom just like with the Screencastify did. Now, I don't recommend doing anything longer than like five minutes because that's going to be, that's going to take so long for it to upload. It could time out. So don't go longer than five minutes. Every morning you should post a community video, like a welcome video for your students directly into classroom. And if you can put that under announcements, it's just for you to connect with your students and students do connect with people through video. So don't think that they can't connect with you and you can't connect with them. So make videos to where they can watch you. Here's the thing though. Look at the screen because on their end, they're going to know that you're talking to them. It's so when I'm talking to you guys, I'm trying to look here the whole time because it looks like I'm looking you directly in the eyes, even though I can't see you in person. They're going to feel that even on pre-recorded videos. So another thing you can do is you can let students do the announcements. So let them take turns and toss it. Um, uh, LOL master. Yes, you can use zoom to cast to students. You can take that link and then you can take off their video access where you can't see their faces. And then you can do that. Um, so that's what I recommend. So Scott, you are doing daily videos. That's awesome. How's it going? Are they connecting? Are they, are you creating, are you like asking for discussion stuff? I'd love to hear that in the chat. Okay. So, um, yes. Uh, Carissa, I understand that too, because that gets messy in there in the discussion if people are just tossing in stuff. So you can create conversations with students. Um, you guys know this with the bell ringers I have, tarbrackacademy.com slash quote. I've got quote of the day bell ringers. It's a good way to get conversations started with your students and also take a role if you want. I've got videos on that. Hit me up, text me, and I can send you that resource. Just text it to that number on the screen. Okay. Other things, little tips you can get from classroom in here. Um, it's automatically going to create a classroom calendar for you. Whenever you click on Google calendar, it's going to go into the calendar. Every class you create in classroom and every student class of students are added to in classroom creates a Google calendar. Now you can go over here to the left and you can turn them on or off. So I've got this class. I could turn it on or off. I've got this class. I could turn it on or off. You can choose what you do with your classroom um, calendar. So uh, let's see what else. Uh, Google Drive. You have this already sorted in Drive. We've already talked about that. Dina, you use the quote, quote of the day. How's it going? I really want to know because I want to adjust if you're not. I'm actually building out a really cool resource of quote of the day where it goes into like a full year quote of the day binder, but I'm, I'm not done with it yet, but it's almost done. Text that number. I'll send it when I'm done. Um, also create video. Um, here's the link to the stuff on the quote of the day stuff. If you don't have it, we've already talked about it, but here's the trick. And I don't know if I said this last time, you can use it for attendance. So if your students are required to check in at like every day, you could schedule it to go live at 9 a.m. And then scheduled to close at 915, like the assignment to be done. Now they can still submit it and get some points, but you'll know when it says submitted late, you'll have the opportunity to mark them as absent. It's like a great way to do attendance for you. So, um, and yes, Chris is right. Anytime you add an assignment with a due date, it'll automatically add it to the student's calendar. It's incredible. Um, here's a little cheat sheet if you want on when to use certain types of videos. Um, whenever you're just wanting them to get the information, just go find it on YouTube, toss it in there. You can create a playlist, toss it in there. Um, if you want to present the information, you can pre-record it with your phone, or you can do like a live video on YouTube or StreamYard, something like this. Um, whenever you want to present that StreamYard, that's YouTube live. When you want to pre-record, you can upload it straight to YouTube. You can do it in Screencastify or Loom. Um, you can do a YouTube premiere, which is really cool. <laughs> and, um, then you can go in. And then number four, conversations, discussions, you can toss in, um, you can do a Google Meet. That's where students can interact and talk with you. Awesome. I've also got a Google Classroom starter kit for students if you want it to. And then that's most of what I have. I've got 10 minutes where I can answer questions, show you guys stuff, anything you want. Um, if you text teacher to that number, you can hit me up. I can shoot you resources. I can, um, that anytime I make a new resource, I'll throw out three resources on there. It's a good way to stay connected. Okay. Dina said, I'm going to toss this up. Dina said she used them as daily bell ringers, set a timer with a crazy alarm sound. And then, so you do it with a live class. Oh, that's awesome. Do you do that live or do you do that pre-recorded? 
Either way, that's a really cool idea. I like that. Um, Scott says he does a weekly virtual call during the prep. They love the opportunity to connect. So it's like you're open on your Google Meet where students can jump in and you guys can interact. That's pretty cool. I like that a lot too. Um, LOL Master said, do you think I should do a Zoom but on YouTube with your students or no? Um, you would need to get permissions from the students. Anytime you do a Zoom, you're going to be able to see their faces as well. Uh, there's a lot of hoops to jump through. When you do that, I recommend if you're streaming on YouTube, unless you're like your building or your principal says it's okay and all the parents say it's okay, I would recommend doing what I'm doing now where I'm streaming live and you guys can chat or comment, but you don't have to worry about, um, you don't have to worry about any privacy issues with seeing students' faces or their houses. Okay. Um, Dina said live class and virtual at the same time. Ooh. That is cool. So are you having your live people? What I would do, and I'm sure you're probably doing this, Dina. I would have, um, I would have those people and I would have uh, the people that are in person talking to the people that are virtual. That way you can chat with them. They're having conversations among each other. It's like your in-person people now become like live moderators talking and getting virtual students involved. Cause that's the thing. If you're in person, there's a whole level of interaction that's happening automatically. For virtual students, they're missing that. There's a little bit of a gap there for them. Anything you can do to link those students and let them feel a part of it is gonna is gonna help your class feel more tight and connected to you. So throw in any more questions. Um, <clears throat> okay. So yes, uh, Chris is that's absolutely correct, Robin. That's what Chris said is good. You can go into the settings of the class and you can adjust that. So I want to show you a couple settings in here. When I'm in my class, I can go to this gear in the upper right hand corner and I can click on that. And that's where it has all like a plethora of settings for you and any of your students that you need. So you can go in here. Um, this is where you can turn on classroom meet. You can, by the way, they're about to drop some dope resources for Google meet. However, it's September 30th is the last day. If your school is not a Google enterprise, you might hit up your Google admin at your school and see if you can get it. Um, let's see, there's a link to invite. You can do a class code. You can display the class code. Uh, let's see, classwork stream. You can choose what students are allowed to do and post on the stream. If it's just you, students can comment, post and comment, all of that. Okay, so you can toss that in there. Um, let's see. Um, let's see how long I've been on YouTube. I've been on YouTube for 13 years. Been on 13 years. I started putting educational stuff on 12 years ago. So I've been putting educational videos on there. Started with math. Been doing Google tech, teacher tips, things like that. Anything to help teachers and students learn and grow, have fun. Uh, Scott said next week he's allowing virtual students to jump on Google Meet during class. They will be projected on the TV, all students be able to interact. That's so good. I was actually in a meeting today. There were five people in the room and there were 18 people on the screen virtually. And we were talking, connecting. We might as well have all been in the same room. I think that is a great, great idea. Uh, what can be an alternative to Google Meet? It depends on what kind of interaction you want. So Google Meet, um, if you're wanting the students to be able to talk and you be able to see their faces, then Meet, Zoom, I mean, Skype, if that's still a thing, uh, Microsoft Teams, if your school uses Microsoft, those are all video conference options. That's what Meet is. Meet is a video conference option, your video conferencing. Um, if you just want them to view what you're saying, like we're doing now, but be a part of it, you can let them jump in the chat and then you can talk like this, that's StreamYard or YouTube Live. Now, if you want to cut out any exterior people, you can go in and do a um, unlisted video, take that link, toss it in into um, your Google Classroom, and then only people with that link can join. Carol asks, they, or it says, she doesn't ask, she says they record and upload video lessons to Google from the camera on their Chromebook for the lessons. So are you guys running that live? or are you recording it as a video? Um, the only thing with Chromebooks is they don't have a lot of storage, so you don't wanna download it. You're gonna wanna record it with video live into something and then take that link. One thing you can do, because it takes up a lot of room on your phone or your computer if you record a video in full, it's like five gigs for 45 minutes on most of them. What you can do, a little hack you can do, is you can go in and <clears throat> you, can, you can go to YouTube Live, or StreamYard or whatever it is, and you can hit like live, but make it private. That way nobody can see it. And you're now allowing YouTube or Google or whoever to save the video and it's not saved on your phone 
so it doesn't take up your storage. Then you can go grab that link and share it with your students. Okay. Um, somebody asked, is Google Hangouts good to use? Uh, Google actually transitioned away from Hangouts and they're now calling that Google Meet. So they've changed that platform. They used to have Hangouts, which is essentially Google Meet. They've rebranded it, made a Google Meet, added some features, and then they had Hangouts on air, which was like live Hangouts. That is now being turned into YouTube Live. So great question, great question. Wendy said um, their, her students turn on, turn their cameras off and will not turn them back on. Any tips? Um, no, uh, I mean, I say no, yes. Okay, so I have some tips. To get them to just do it, I, you can't guarantee it unless you start counting off or making it a requirement of the class or calling people. Um, what you could do is you could have students present and it's for a grade and they have to present with their video on. Now, before I require them to turn their video camera on, you need to check with your principal and make sure that you are allowed to require that. Some schools won't allow teachers to require video on because it could show the student's house and a student might be like embarrassed or not comfortable showing their home on video to their classmates. So I would check with my principal first. If they're okay with it, you can start requiring it. It's just like, you know, the rule, like don't, I don't know, you can't, you know, wear a hat in the classroom if that's a rule that people care about. If you can't wear a hat in class, how do you handle that rule? If they wear a hat in class, you address it, they don't take it off, you tell the principal. And that would just be the process you have to go through if your principal's okay with that. So that would be my tip. Um, yeah, Carissa's saying the same thing, checking with the school administrators. Um, so school has to remove them and let the admin add them attendance clerk. No, okay, so they don't count as attendance. So because students can turn it on. One thing I do a lot is I ask the students questions and I ask them to interact. So, hey, so-and-so, what do you think here? Hey, so-and-so, what do you do this? The same thing I would do in a personal classroom, like an in-person classroom, is call on students to make sure they're paying attention. So great question, Wendy. Um, check with the principal first, and after that, you can just start getting them involved however you're allowed to, and that's one thing I would do. Carol said that their virtual lessons aren't live. Some of the students do not have internet connections till later in the day. Yeah, that, that happens. I totally get that. So I'm assuming you're either recording it live um, either as private and then making it public or you're recording it live and then just posting the link or you're recording it on your phone and then uploading it. There's a couple options of what you could do with that. So uh, those are some of the options of what you could do with virtual. Any more questions? We're about done with our time. I want to answer anything anybody has at the end of this session. Again, if you text teacher to 501-214-4071, that will allow me to send you free resources in the future. That is a free tech, 100% free for you guys, cost me money, it's free for you, and it's a way for me to send you that. Um, Anna, we are trying to do like a teacher training thing right now. We love that you're a part of this, but we're trying to throw out ideas for teachers on Google Classroom, but I appreciate that you're here. Don't forget to like and subscribe, okay? Uh, somebody said same issue. Google Meet attendance will show up if they are on and how long they stay. Yep. That is a new feature that's being rolled out. Actually, I think that's the add on Google Meet attendance. They're actually rolling out an attendance thing for Google Meet. So that's really cool. OK, thank you, guys. Oh, Tammy just tossed in the link to the PD certificate. If you want to get PD credit for this, professional development credit for this, click on that link. Anna, don't be sorry. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're learning with us. We hope you learned something about Google Classroom. We're excited you're ha hanging out with us. Um, so click that link and you can get that PD for this. I wanna thank the ALA uh, for allowing me to be a part of this. Tammy Gilmore, you're incredible. I love what you're doing in your class. I love seeing you post on Facebook about some of the cool stuff you're doing. Tammy's awesome. Give her a hand. I don't have anyone else in the room with me, but Tammy's incredible and I just appreciate her a lot. And I'm so thankful to be here. You guys are great. This video will be up. If you guys wanna use this, share it with any other teachers, share it with anybody you want. They can have this link, you can send it to your administration. They can have it to give teachers as a resource for Google Classroom. As always, if you wanna hit the red subscribe button, that would be cool, it's free. You can always unsubscribe later, but I would appreciate it. And no, Tammy, I'm not gonna stop. You are incredible. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. Uh, Shireen, yes, this is gonna stay live. So this video, the same link that you're clicking on, this video will stay a YouTube video as long as I have a YouTube channel. So you can click on it and you can check that out. Okay, thank you guys, I appreciate you. Thanks for joining, you guys are awesome, and uh, you guys are great, I had fun. It was a very, I will say this, that was one of my most interesting 
uh, live streams that I've done. Next webinar, third Tuesday in October. Get on that list for ALA. Tammy Gilmore, if you want it, I can send you the link. Text me, the, text me, and I can send you the link. I can send you Tammy. She'll give me the contact stuff. I can text it to you if you need it. Y'all are great. It's going to be a great year. And remember, I know it's frustrating, but you're going to keep learning. Your students are going to keep learning and everything's going to keep getting better as long as you keep working, keep a positive attitude, keep rocking and rolling. I'm getting hyped. Are y'all hyped? My kids are asleep. I don't care. I'm hyped. We're doing this. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you, Paige. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Carissa. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Rhonda. Y'all are awesome. I'm going to keep saying thank you. Y'all are so great. Why am I yelling? I'm so sorry for yelling. Okay, I'm going to end this. I'm sweating. Like and subscribe. Y'all be 